Robinson Cano is a Seattle Mariner, and uh, that's just a part of the story in the Pacific Northwest. Mariners GM Jack Sorensic joins us on Hot Stove. Jack, good morning. Nothing going on in Seattle these <laughs> days, right? Just blah, 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 same old. <laughs> Hey, everything's good. Everything's <laughs> lovely. We have so much to get into you with. Uh, Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, Taiwan Walker, and, of course, this big story that ran in the Seattle Times recently with Eric Wedge um, upon exiting, very critical of the organization. You guys, you and Chuck and the rest of the front office, you have answered back through the media as well. These, these have to be very difficult times for you in Seattle. It's part of what you do, you know, I mean, unfortunate, but uh, we're moving on, you know, it's behind us, you know, our focus is on trying to make our ball club better, case closed. Hmm. So when, when all this started breaking, the article with uh, Eric and all that, were you guys aware this was coming? Do you have yeah, we got an update idea? a couple of days before, you know, and our position has always been not to comment on things that happen internally, and, and you know, outside of the fact that we, uh, that I gave a release yesterday, it's done, it's over, and as far as we're concerned, well, you know, our, our job is to concentrate on baseball and try to make this club better, and that's what we're attempting to do here at the Winter Meetings. Jack, the one thing that stood out to me in that article was that two of your longtime friends, Carmen Fusco mm -hmm. and Tony Blangino, they were critical and they were on the record. What happened between you and those guys? <laughs> you know, once again, um, there's two sides to every story, but I would prefer not to talk about either. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's behind us. It's not an issue. Let's move forward then, okay, Jack. Jack's trying to move on. But, Jack, I got to <laughs> <laughs> well, let, well, let's talk. I mean, it all, it all kind of ties into what's happening here in Seattle. I mean, the state of a, a franchise that has underperformed the past couple of years, you guys, as you have been the past couple of years, get to the winter meetings to try to make the team better and a big splash with Robinson Cano. Talk about the backstory. Talk about the signing. Uh, we heard it was dead. We heard it was alive. We heard you guys had to go farther than where you were originally we heard comfortable. They walked out. Yeah. <laughs> Give us the story on the Cano signing. Well, uh, first of all, it's it's not official, you know. So we've still got you know work to do um, uh, in the next few days. But you know, if if this thing happens, then it's going to be and it is big news in the Northwest. I mean, you got you got a great player, you know, and something that that we wanted to do. We you know we had tried a few years, the last couple of years, to try to do something big. This opportunity presented itself. I think it, everyone involved did a tremendous job, you know, and. Uh, the meetings were phenomenal. You know, there was, you know, some of the stuff that was said, just no truth to it at all. It was just, you know, very professional. And, uh, you know, it was interesting that, that uh, he's a very cordial guy, the whole group around him, you know, we, we had good relationships. And again, you know, hope we, hopefully we'll get this thing finalized in the next couple of days. What was it like when Jack Z met Jay Z? <laughs> I'm the original. I was <laughs> the original. I was, was Jay Z before Jay Z was Jay Z. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I thought that was interesting because one of the reports, we thought, okay, the deal's getting done, you had it out there, and then it was the Mariner stormed out. And, <laughs> and, and so I, I, I was like, wow, really? And then the deal got done the next day. So was there any storming out and things like that going on? None whatsoever. None. It was, it was a cordial of uh, a gathering of, of, of people that had a, uh, you know, a like goal in mind. And uh, at, at the end... You know, hopefully we have an announcement officially here in the next few days. So let's talk about the player, Robinson Cano. Why? Why did you go to 240? Why did you want him? Why did you target him so, so heavily? You know, he's it, a terrific player. I mean, at the end, you're looking at one of the better players in the game of baseball. Uh, you know, we've been building this thing for five years. You know, we've um, you know, basically stripped it down and now putting it back up. We've got a lot, of, a lot of nice young pieces to this ball club. A lot of exciting things, I think, right around the corner. Um, and I think to bring in a guy that you think is a star, a chance, a superstar, you know, it just gives your, gives your whole ball club credibility. I know if you talk to the individual players on our club, they're, they're excited as anybody. You know, this fact that I may have an opportunity to be this guy's teammate, he's a star. You know, we'd like to do more before this, the winter meetings are over and throughout the course of the year, you know, if, if, if certainly in the next few weeks and maybe even a month. But, you know, he, it, it's, it's a... Uh, it's bringing the, it's bringing a very very talented player to your ball club. You well, know, let's, let's talk about the strip down and and bring up because I was like, why are they going all the way out there on one guy with mm -hmm. this kind of money when you got 17 rookies you had in the big leagues and you've laid the foundation? I didn't think it was time, but uh, clearly you did. And what's your vision and why now and and not in a new year or two maybe or adding other players for the, the amount of money? You know, again, it, it's it's pretty simple. How often do you get an opportunity to add a superstar? 
-hmm. You just don't get those kind of opportunities. You look at what the free agent market will be in the next couple of years, this particular player may not be available. The fact that it's a long-term deal, he's going to be with your club for several years. This isn't a deal where he's here today and not, you know, he's going to be gone tomorrow. And if this thing, if, if it gets finalized, and he's going to be with us for several years. So we continue to add, continue to build. And again, as our young kids grow, and we've got this young pitching, we've got Felix, we've got Iwakuma, we're at, trying to add around that. You know, we think, who knows? You know, you put your best club on a field, and, and you add stars to it, and, and who knows what could happen. Jack, you're involved in a number of trade discussions here, and obviously some big ones. Could you do trades for both David Price and Matt Kemp? That would be challenging. You know, I think that'd be very challenging. I think you just get to a uh, dollars and cents standpoint. You know, you get talent-wise, we might be able to do it. You know, and there's a good example. You know, when you talk about where are the Mariners? Well, you're just you're talking about two of the top players in the game. You know, if they're both healthy, and we have the ability to bring those players to this organization. But it all becomes, are you what are you willing to sacrifice for it, and what kind of available dollars do you have to be able to do it? Now, getting back to that, there's been a lot of talk about Taiwan Walker. Mm -hmm. You have the option, you could trade him, perhaps in a deal for Price, or you could keep him and perhaps sign a free agent starting pitcher. What goes into that decision, which way to go? Yeah, there's, I mean, a lot goes into it. You know, we just had a session this morning with our group of guys, you know, asking everybody to give me your thoughts. You know, now that we've been here a few days, you know, we've been talking about this stuff since the end of the season. Uh, you know, Taiwan, we, we think it has a chance to be extremely, extremely good pitcher. You know, we think he's a top of the rotation guy. And I can tell you, he's the most sought-after guy that any discussions that I have, you know, between those that young group of players we have, whether it's him or Zanino or, or, or Miller or Franklin, get a lot, a lot of ask about those kids. Paxton, you know, I think this, the, the, the question, though, is you're, if you're patient enough to wait for these kids to really bloom, and it might be quick. You know, look what St. Louis did with some of their young kids this year. Mm -hmm. And if Walker and Paxton, who were very impressive in September for us, if they can take the next step, our, if our players can continue to grow, we've added a star, you know, better days are ahead for the Seattle Mariners. Do you, do you, Jack, do you think uh, in the Northwest there's been a lot of pressure, you've lost a lot of fan base, a lot of fans not being patient. They don't necessarily see it like you may have seen all this talent there. They want, we got to have it now. Does that put additional pressure on you to sit there and go, I don't know if I can hold on to these kids, I may have to make a move. You know, I, I have to do what's right for for these players, for this organization. You know, is it tempting to turn around and add a star here, add a star there, give up two or three players? Sure it is. It's difficult sometimes to take a step back and say, we've got to wait, because these kids could be what we're trading for in another year or two or three, so. There are certain teams out there, Jack, for whom it's said might need to overpay to get their man. You guys were involved in the Josh Hamilton sweepstakes a year ago, Prince Fielder a couple of years ago. You land Cano this year. Now there's a report that you had discussions regarding Nelson Cruz and that he passed on a $75 million package. Can you confirm or deny any of that? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I'd like to start a lot of rumors here this morning as well. You know, again, we're engaged and we have uh, we have not made an official offer an official offer to anybody. Okay. You know, I mean, we have not done that. We have uh, we have had discussions, we've had dialogue, and we certainly want to get better. But to put an offer on a table and say this is where we're at today, that that, that hasn't happened. Hey, Jack. Getting back to one thing that was in the article, but it also applies to baseball in general. This idea that you do not embrace statistical analysis, <laughs> that you are not comfortable with it, and when we're talking about players, this is what we talk about today. Right. All teams use it. Where are you on that, and how much does it factor into what you're doing right now? It, it, it heavily factors into it. I can, I can guarantee you, as we went through all the ballpark factors, we went through all the analysis of, of Robin Cano in our ballpark. I mean, we gauged everything, where he would fit in our lineup, and every other player. You know, we've got a really sharp group of guys. You know, we've brought in about six different guys over the last couple of years um, that are here with us today, in fact, and, and they're very sharp. And there's never a day that, that doesn't go by when you don't look at your scouts and look at your statistical analysis department and ask them to, to blend this. And what is my job? You know, you know, if I can walk into a sabermetrics room today, you know, am I going to command a floor? Of course not. You know, that isn't my skill set. However, I've got a lot of knowledge of it. I've got a lot of people around me. And as we talk and dialogue, it has to be a part. And there's not a general manager in baseball today that isn't involved on a, on a heavy. And you have to pay attention to it. You have to, you have to be cognizant. You have to have. And if you don't have the answers to it, then those around you will. <coughs> excuse me. And make the suggestions. And you know, you have to be smart enough to say, hey, I, 
been in this for years and years and years, and I've seen from the scout side, when you'll go in and you'll hear, hear a discussion, it's, it's in, in a good discussion, but it's incomplete without the statistical analysis department. It just, it, you have to blend the two to make the accurate decisions. So how does Nelson Cruz's park factor figure into safety? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's between us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I got a question for you. Uh, if I'm a Mariner <laughs> fan, I'm sitting back in the Northwest and I'm watching Zach Zarenzik on TV, I'm wondering what's the vision of the organization? What, what's your vision? Um, like every other general manager in baseball, is to win a World Series. We've got a great city, we've got a great fan base. You know, it's, it's the difficult thing, Harold, and you know this, you've been through this, is when you are building an organization, you're doing everything you can to make the right steps. You're going to stub your toe occasionally, it's just going to happen. But we have never deviated from the course that we've been on. We have said from the beginning, we're going to build this thing from within. The unfortunate thing about baseball, and every general manager in baseball knows it, you can't get a guy to the big leagues in a year or two. It's so rare. You know, that it takes three, four, five years now. <clears throat> when that player gets there, now he's got to be established as a big league player, and there's a growing curve there. So even if you get all these kids that are big leagues like we have, they're not all going to be stars. You know, the Mike Trouts of the world are rare. I mean, those are so rare. But yeah. as the kids grow, and we've seen there's, there's just player after player after player in every organization that's, that's gone up, gone back, gone up, gone back, and all of a sudden, wow, you know, that guy's kind of, got his footing, and I think that's what we're looking at with the Mariners. You know, and that's, the, that's part of what, what's confusing to us mm -hmm. when, you, when you read about criticism, especially from a guy who was a part of the process, speaking of the Eric Wedge article. You've had so much success in your career in Pittsburgh, architecting a, a very competitive Brewers team, <coughs> and had so much to do with the drafting and developing of, of their star core, some of which is gone now. Um, do you feel at times like the need to defend yourself is such that you have to step out there and thump your chest a little bit and say, hey, guys, I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> you know, that isn't my style. But, Matt, you've known me for, for years. You know, we were together in Milwaukee. Harold, we've had a great relationship. I've known you forever, you know, for a long time. Look, I've, I've been a person that, that gives people the respect that they deserve. You know, and, and many times I'll go beyond. It's just the way it is. You, you have to treat people with respect. You, even if you have differences of opinion, I respect that. You know, there has never been a time, I think, that I've gone into anybody's office or talked to anybody and, and have, have down, or be, it's just not my style, to begrade him or whatever. No, you know, even if we differ, that's fine. You've got a different viewpoint than I have. But grown men can sit down and say, we're going to take the next step, we're going to go forward. I, I respect what you're saying, even if I disagree. At the end, the general manager's job is to gather all of these, these thoughts and processes from everybody, the minor leagues, the scouting, the pro scouting, the amateur department, and make a decision. Uh, we, we sat here, what, 12, 15 minutes with you already, and we never asked you about your manager, Lloyd yeah. McClendon. Yeah, thank you. I'm, how, I'm glad you've done that. I'm glad you How'd you that. settle on that, and, yeah. and how'd that come about? You know, Lloyd was in a running a few years ago, and, uh, you know, we made a choice that we made, and, and when we circled back around this time, you know, Lloyd and I had a relationship, a professional relationship, you know, in Pittsburgh. He was a player, but we knew each other over the years. In fact, he and I have the same birthday. Uh, born well, on the same day. He's 10 years older that than I am. Decided. Yeah, you know. <laughs> How about that one? But Children I, like of you the said, Zodiac. It, yeah, he's a little older than me, but nevertheless, you know, he's... You. And, and when Lloyd came in for the interview, you know, timing is everything and, and the type of person that you're looking for and his, his sincerity, his, his genuine type of person that he is and the staff that we've got around him, I'm very excited about. This is a good group of guys and, and I'm really looking forward. I think, our, I think the Northwest is going to really rally around this guy. Hey, Jack, one thing we haven't asked you about, one area of the team, sure. closer. Mm -hmm. I know you are looking there. What are you considering? Is it free agency and trades? <laughs> Both. You know, although we can stay from within. I mean, we've had Tom Wilhelmson that, you know, you go to the end of it two years ago and the beginning of last year. He was as good as anybody in the game. <clears throat> Danny Farquhar took over last year in midseason when Tom stubbed his toe. He did a really nice job. You know, we've been able to create some closers. We've traded for Brandon League. He became an all-star. We had David Arts. He did a really nice job for us. You know, and it, you, you can't do everything. I wish I could. You know, if you give me another 50 million bucks, you know, and I could say, okay, we're going to add every one of these pieces. We have to pick and choose. We have to be smart in, what, in our available dollars and try to make some choices and fill in the other spots the best we can. Jack, thanks for taking some You're time with us. You're officially off the hot seat. We, we know how busy you are down here with yeah. all the things cooking around the Mariners these days in particular. Thanks for the time, and, and good luck in no, 2014. Thanks. Appreciate it very much.